But we want to welcome you to our rally, our unity rally, for a, a united black front. To unite all factions of our people. To unite every one of the 20 million so-called Negroes into one group. And you'll notice, whenever the white man thinks that we're going to call a rally to knock our own kind, you see him jammed out here. He wants to hear us say something against King or against Bunch or against Farmer, against someone of our own kind. He jams out here. But when you call a rally, of, a rally for black people to unite, let's get together, you don't see too many white folks then. They don't like black people to get together in unity and harmony. As long as you and I are going to attack each other or talk about each other or heap scorn and ridicule upon each other, the white man gets his kick. But when he knows that we're going to come together in unity and harmony, he won't get his kick. He will get kicked. When you see you and I getting together, it is because we have begun to realize that we have a common enemy. And the only time we'll be able to come together with a common objective and a common goal is when we first develop a common motive. And that motive is best developed by recognizing the common enemy. And that common enemy is the white man. I say that common enemy is the white man. The white man is your enemy whether you are a Baptist, whether you are a Methodist, whether you are a Episcopalian, or whether you're a Muslim, or whether you're a Mason, or whether you're an Elk, if you find yourself running into opposition when you're looking for freedom, justice, and equality, or some kind of right, you have to agree, always the one who opposes your rights is the white man. Some old, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, bad-smelling white man. When he puts his club upside your head, he doesn't care whether you're a Baptist, a Methodist, but he does want to know whether or not you're a Muslim. Because he knows if you're a Baptist or a Methodist, you're going to turn the other cheek. You're going to try and love your enemy. You're going to pray for them that despitefully use you. So he's not worried about you. But he knows if you're a Muslim, you're not going to turn the other cheek. If you pray for him, you pray that God kills him, or God helps you to kill him. That's the only kind of prayer you pray. It's time for you and me to unite, to get together and get this big white ape off our back. You got a bad habit. You're hooked and don't know it. You got what's known as white disease. You think you can't get along without the white man. You think you can't get some clothes without the white man. You think you can't get a house without the white man. You think you can't even get a job without the white man. You're worse than the man who thinks he can't get along without Huron. You're worse than the man who thinks he can't get along without morphine. You're worse than the junkie. You're in worse shape than the junkie because the junkie only has a little monkey on his back and you're running around with a big white ape named Uncle Sam on your back. America is faced with her worst domestic crisis since the Civil War or since the Revolutionary War. For America now faces a race war. A race war is worse than a revolutionary war. A race war is worse than a civil war. A race war is a war in which no holes are barred. A race war is a war in which children are destroyed, in which children are mutilated, in which children face the same destructive wrath that grown-ups face. The race, a race war is the worst war that you can conceive. And this war, race war, that is coming upon the head of the white man is something that he is bringing down upon himself. The entire country is on the verge of erupting into racial violence and bloodshed. Simply because 20 million ex-slaves are demanding freedom, justice, and equality here in America from their former slave master, 20 million so-called Negroes, second-class citizens, seeking human dignity, seeking human rights, seeking the right to live in dignity as a human being. And rather than give genuine respect and recognition to your cry for human rights, 
The American white man answers your nonviolence with violence. He answers your prayers and your freedom songs with false promises, deceitful maneuvers, and outright bloodshed. According to what we are taught from the white man's textbooks and his school, the Revolutionary War and the Civil War were two wars fought on American soil supposedly for freedom and democracy. But if these two wars were really for the freedom and human dignity of all men, why are 20 million of our people still confined here in America and enslaved by second-class citizenship? Something is wrong. The truth is that the Revolutionary War was fought on American soil to free the American white man from the English white man. The Revolutionary War was never fought to provide freedom and democracy in this white country for the black man. Our people remain slaves here in America even after the Declaration of Independence was signed. In fact, most of the white founding fathers who signed the Declaration of Independence were nothing but slave owners themselves. It is sheer hypocrisy, sheer ignorance, sheer insanity for our people here in America to celebrate the 4th of July as Independence Day, while white America still denies us first-class citizenship that goes with an independent people. And it is nothing but hypocrisy for the American white man to pretend that the Revolutionary War was truly a war of independence as long as 20 million black people here in America are denied the privileges of an independent people. Don't let the white man fool you. Don't let the white man smile at you and lull you to sleep. Behind that smile is a vicious heart. Behind those teeth is an animal-like beast who doesn't have it within him to want for you what he wants for himself and his own kind. Don't let that man fool you. When you look at that man, you're supposed to see him for exactly what he is. And if you want to know what he is, examine his deeds. Forget his words. He got a whole lot of pretty sounding words. Watch his deeds. His deeds are like the deeds of a snake, the deeds of a serpent, the, needs of, the deeds of a dragon, the deeds of a reptile, the deeds of a beast. Why, nothing but a race of beasts would take dogs and stick them on little black babies. Nothing but a race of beasts will stick dogs on black children and black women. Nothing but a race of beasts. And it is for these, and it is these deeds today that's causing the wrath of God to come down upon the head of the white man. And when you see him as he is and see how much hell he's catching, you're out of his mind to want to be with him. You're out of his mind to want. You're out of your mind to want to integrate with him. And you are really out of your mind if you take time to forgive him and ask God to have mercy on him. No, ask God to judge him. Ask God to do unto him as he has done unto you. He has caused your babies to suffer. Ask God to heap suffering upon his babies. He has caused your women to suffer. Ask God to heap suffering on his women. He has caused all of our people to suffer. You can't deny that. You may not like my saying it, but you can't deny it. Why, you got scars and knots on your head from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And every one of those scars is evidence against the American white man and his in inhumanity to man. The Civil War was also fought on this continent. Not to free the black slave, as is commonly taught in the white man's school, but the Civil War was actually fought to preserve the Union, preserve this country, keep it intact for white people. It wasn't fought to set you free. It wasn't fought to give you some kind of emancipation. It wasn't fought to make you a citizen. It wasn't fought to give you civil rights. It wasn't fought because they respected you and loved you as a human being. It was fought out of greed. It was fought out of selfishness. It was fought to keep this country intact for their own white selves. In essence, this only means that the American white man fought the Revolutionary War to get this country for himself. And he then fought the Civil War 
to keep this country intact for himself. And today, he will now fight a race war to keep from having to share this white country on an equal basis with anyone else but his white self, especially on an equal basis with his 20 million former slaves. So again I ask, where will all of these demonstrations end? And who dares to say that our people are not justified by demonstrating their resentment over the injustice and mistreatment that our people have suffered these 400 years at the hands of this cruel, inhuman American white man. We have nothing to lose but our change. We have nothing to lose but the hell we experience every day living here in these rat-filled slums. You have to excuse me for being blunt, blunt speaking and frank talking. We don't care who likes it or not, as long as we know it's the truth. Much of what I say might sound bitter, but it's the truth. Right. Much, of, much of what I say might sound like it's stirring up trouble, but it's the truth. Right. Much of what I say might sound like it is hate, but it's the truth. And God will tell, God has uh, mentioned in the Bible, it's truth alone today that'll make you free. If you're afraid to tell the truth, why you don't even deserve freedom. Just tell the truth. The best thing to put the white man to flight is truth. He can't take the truth. He can't stand the truth. He doesn't like the truth, especially when you know the truth about him. The truth about how he got those blue eyes. And the truth about how he got that stringy dog-like hair. And the truth about how his skin became as pale and pallid and sickly as it is. When you know the truth about how he got the way he is, you can run him down the street with nothing but truth. You don't need any blade. You don't need any switchblade. All you need is the truth. They put you in jail for carrying a blade, but they can't put you in jail for telling the truth. <laughs>